Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Big Easy Deadlands. It's by John Goff and it's for two to four players. It takes about 45 minutes to play and it's about ages 13 and up. It's a noir card game of sorts in which you're going to be a detective and you're going to be trying to search for certain things such as evidence, suspect, and of course motive. If you can find all three of these things at the beginning of your turn, you're going to win, but that's not what the other investigator is trying to halt you in that process along with trying to figure out who they think actually did the crime. There are different investigation types that you're going to get to go through, different case files, one, two, and uh, three here I have. There could be more, though. And as well as there's different locations and neighborhoods that you're going to be traversing through. There's threats that you're going to encounter. And additionally, there's then you're going to investigate the scene of the crime to gather what you need. If you can get all three of the specific things you need in order to figure out who did it, where, and when, then you're going to win the game. All right, let me go ahead and show you down below the game. The Big Easy. So here we have the game The Big Easy Deadlands and everything included. And let's go ahead and talk you through it. So first you have the box, of course. It has got the front and back and it's got the nice art and shows you what's in the game, which is nice, as well as the full explanation for the rule book here. There are the three different uh, neighborhoods or locations, I should say, with, with neighborhood cards available as well. These are the different case files, which I just kind of explain one or two of them. Uh, these are the different character characters you can go ahead and choose from as, a as, as well as uh, the back is going to show you what you can do on your turn and then you've got your three different types of uh, things you need to win the game objectives evidence suspects and motives these are the threats that you'll encounter when you're trying to investigate the scene of the crime and then these are your gumshoe cards they'll be anywhere from locations to uh, different things that can help you along the way to equipment so all these good things you can utilize and that's pretty much what you're getting in the game other than some character tokens that you can place on the cards to signify where your characters are at and some other bonus tokens all right so let's come up I'll explain how a turn works and I'll show you a basic idea of a turn. To begin a game of the Big Easy, you're going to first start with picking one of the characters, and all the characters do different things. They have the patient, uh, so the, the pe patent scientist, the dilettante, dilettante, hieris, the grifter, and the private detective, and of course the different character abilities, and the back tells you how your turn works. You're going to get six gumshoe cards, you're going to place out three of the neighborhoods, you're going to get your character pawn, or chit, along with setting aside the case that you're going to be playing. So for instance, the first one you're going to play is called a Singer's Requiem, Dixie is dead, uh, and the victory condition is simply the standard victory conditions, and there's no additional rules, while others will have additional rules. So basically different ways to play the game, more advanced setups and all that kind of stuff. And the main objective, of course, is to getting one of each of the three green cards, Motive, Suspect, and Evidence. Uh, then you're going to take six cards into your hand. They're gumshoe cards, they're the green one, or the blue ones, and they're going to have different things in them that can help you out. Uh, it tells you on here exactly what you're going to do. It says draw to fill your hand, then do your legwork, where you can play legwork, location, and equip cards in front of you. Most of the time, they're going to be things that help you. Uh, then you're going to move. You'll choose a location to move to that's adjacent to the one you're at, or you can go to a different neighborhood. Uh, then after that you investigate a location that hasn't already been taken away from the board and you're gonna have to deal with any threats that pop up These are nasty things that could be make the location haunted and after you deal with that Players can then mess with you to try and stop you from investigating the scene of the crime Then if you can accomplish that you're going to be able to investigate the scene of the crime and achieve whatever it gives you So for instance, it might give you evidence in which case you're not gonna need evidence anymore because you only need one of them And these cards are gonna go in front of you uh, Sometimes they give you bonuses and all that kind of stuff like stolen jewelry then you can discard down to your maximum hand size and in addition you can discard even more cards you don't need so that way on your next turn you can draw up to a new hand of six cards if you'd like um, and metal actions are cards that can be played anytime in your hand usually they tell you on the card how it works play goes around in circles until somebody accomplishes all three of the objectives at which point they declare that they're going to be winning you can try then try and stop them and if they're successful after that phase they win the game uh, deadlands the big easy okay let's go down and i'll show you basically a round or two of how it works and i'll tell you what i think so now we're back to the game, and as you can see, I went ahead and set up for two players. I have the extra characters here, and we're playing the Dixie's Dead scenario, a singer's uh, requiem, in which case you're just simply trying to get one of each of these three things here. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is set up these different um, neighborhood areas and flip over until you find a location. Add that to where it says. So this one says you need to add it to the French Quarter, which would be here, and you just attach it like that. There's different cards that can be attached to different uh, neighborhoods here, and there's the three different neighborhoods. After that, each player is going to get six cards in their hand. I'll just go ahead and deal them out just like this, but normally you want to shuffle and, and deal it correctly. 
And after that, every player is then going to decide where they want to go. And uh, where you want to go is going to be dependent on your character, perhaps. Maybe I want to go over here, and maybe she wants to go over here. These characters are not included. We won't need these either as well. Um, on the other side of your tokens, by the way, you can take damage. So just be aware that there's a black and a red side. And then you're going to go ahead and select a player to begin. Maybe we'll have her go ahead and go first. So the first thing is you drop to your hand size, which she's already at. Legwork means she can play any cards she wants. Um, got a grenade here for legwork, um, some metal cards, some more locations. So maybe she'll go ahead and play this one here. This is a downtown card. and Yeah, we'll play a downtown card. So we place that over there. And uh, none of these cards they she really wants to use. Most of the cards here have symbols that refer to um, different things that they're going to need to be utilized for, as well as a number. And there is a target number on all of these cards. When you're investigating certain locations, you're going to need to hit that target number with utilizing these uh, token these pieces as well. Some cards are metal cards that will affect other players. Play immediately after another detective uh, uh, presents a solution to the case. That player can't win until their next turn. That's a pretty good uh, stay of cards. Stay stay away from somebody winning. Legwork, waste a gumshoe card, which are these cards here, uh, with the this symbol or this symbol, trait, and if it's an equipped card, the detective it was equipped to takes a singular damage. Okay, so this gets rid of certain cards in front of certain players. None of these are equipped cards, so we'd move on next to the uh, move phase. Moving can go from, you can go from any of the different neighborhoods to any other neighborhoods, so the French Quarter to Uptown, uh, or to Downtown, Downtown to any of these two, or you can move from uh, a neighborhood to any of its surrounding locations. In general, there's going to be three at any point in time the most amount. Uh, so she could go ahead and move over to the French Quarter if she wanted to. At which case, after moving, she'd then go ahead and try and investigate. When you investigate, you flip over one of these cards here, and it's generally going to be something bad, like this haunted obstacle. Terror makes you discard two cards uh, when you encounter the card. So maybe we'll get rid of the cemetery there. And then uh, we'll get rid of this metal card here. And after that, it says you can now go ahead and try and accomplish the location by simply adding this little skull symbol to that. So now we have a target number of three, a skull, one of those little pentagrams, and an eyeball. Uh, so she's going to look into her hand, and she's so got a three there and an eyeball, which is four, which is enough to beat this. Uh, here's a two, uh, but no symbols that match, so that's not enough. And then we have a one with no matching symbols either. So each matching symbol is going to give you a plus one bonus. In addition, players can also play cards from their hand uh, to increase the difficulty of, of a location. So for instance, this one has a star and then has a star, so it makes the target number a four from this player, so it makes it a little more difficult for her. But she's still able to use this deductive reasoning, discarding this to be able to solve the location, goes back to the French Quarter, and then obtains whatever it says on here. This one says it's a motive, so in which case she would obtain a motive and uh, she puts this in front of her face down. These things do different things. They help in certain ways, and they're good to keep face down, but you want all three. It doesn't matter the face up or face down. A haunted obstacle is going to go away now. And uh, that would be one singular turn, pretty much. That You can go ahead and discard any cards you want from your hand, or she can go ahead and keep those cards. And uh, the next player would get to go. He, he So he's the next player. He's got his stuff. He's got a goggle, so he can go ahead and equip, which gives him bonuses to certain traits. He's got another location he can go ahead and play. This is a bar in Uptown, and he is in Uptown, so that's why he chose to go there. So he'll play that right there. And then he's got three other cards, two medals and a legwork, so he'll probably keep keep hold of these so he can try and solve this, perhaps. Um, he's going to then go to his uh, move phase, which he'll go ahead and move here. And then he's going to encounter a threat. And I'll flip over a threat here. Uh, this one says, in plain sight, your detective's investigation automatically succeeds, regardless of the target number or any of those other things. So that's excellent, meaning he's actually going to obtain a suspect. That's not very uh, likely to happen, but they do have some good threats, I suppose, or some good uh, different... Uh, situations where that can can occur. And the game's going to continue just like that. Players are going to be trying to do their best to stop you from getting these different things. As you can see, the sp suspects have stuff like gumshoe cards with the pentagram trait uh, your opponents play. To obstruct, you get plus one. So that's pretty useful. 
Uh, this one over here says, if your detective has taken damage this turn, reveal this clue to draw two gumshoe cards. So it lets you draw when you take damage. So they in general do good things for you. But that's the basic idea of the game. Metal cards are going to be there to uh, hinder your opponents. Legwork cards will help you in some ways. Equip cards are things that stay equipped to you, and there's only certain ones that can stay equipped to you at certain times. You can't have more than one getup, for instance, but there are different types of equipments. And there's a good host of different types of cards here that all kind of go with that noir theme. After somebody wins this game by getting one of each of these three, you can simply go ahead and choose to play a new scenario, for instance, Mob Ties, in which case new cards actually get added to the game uh, based on which case file you're playing. As you can see, there's more cards that get added as you continue playing through different case files. But anyway, that's the basic idea for how to play the game, the Big Easy Deadlands. Let's go up and I'll tell you what I think about it and whether or not you should pick it up. All right, so caveats for the game Deadlands, the Big Easy. Well, the first is obviously there are different case files. And I imagine this is a Kickstarter, so what I have here is what I can show you, but there might be more. In fact, I would imagine there's probably more case files, but more and more cards get added. It has this kind of legacy experience as you play but however it does say you can play the basic scenario as many times as you want and uh, it has an interesting amount of story and theme to it now at first I kind of was thinking this was gonna be more of a storytelling game in which you're going to encounter certain things and it kind of flows with the story and it does if you kind of make it yourself, like give it this theme as to why you're doing and what you're looking for. But in general, this game is a tactical card game in which you're trying to move your characters around from location to location, finding the three different things you need, stopping other players from doing that, using take that method, using tableau management as far as your equipments go, as well as trying to, uh, go on to certain locations and gather those different clues and whatnot to avoid having to deal with your opponents doing that. Of course, there's also going to be encounters that you're going to have to deal with all these different red cards. Most of them are not good. In fact, they're going to hurt you in some way. Uh, you can also take damage in the game. Whatever you, as your number is, maybe you need five and you have three, you're going to take two damage, which means you're going to flip over your character and you're going to dis discard cards from your hand. If you ever had no cards in your hand, that'll end your turn kind of thing. That's a nice little added way to uh, make it so you're never actually going to be out of the game or anything like that. And it's not going to make you suffer losing a turn. The game simply continues moving along until somebody accomplishes their goal and the goals get more and more, they, dra they, do, they do change as the different cases go on and on. Um, as far as the evidence and suspects and motives, they're all kind of the same. That's basically the same idea as you just complete a location and you get one of these things. But they do different things. All of them have different um, different uh, requirements. They'll give you different benefits and different and that, that kind of stuff. You only need one of each of them. But maybe this one here, like incriminating receipt. Metal. Reveal this clue to return a gumshoe card with the spores, the little like cogwheel trait from the boneyard to your hand, the, the graveyard, right? And then you have another doctored bills. And then you have the wiretap con uh, transcript and so on and so forth. Most of these are going to be evidence. are going to be like paper documents of some sort. The suspects are all going to be different people and whatnot. So it's cool. Uh, there is... Uh, a lot of artwork in the game present right now. There's like, still some of it that I haven't seen yet, but as far as the artwork goes, I really like it. I like noir style themes. I like noir automata, the Penny Arcade game kind of feel. I enjoy the dark, gritty crime scene investigator. It reminds me a little bit of the Cthulhu-esque investigators as well, which is cool. Um, so I, I, I really like the theme. I really like the style. I like the storyline. The only thing I was kind of expecting more was instead of it being a tactical movement kind of game. I thought this was going to be more of like a uh, going through a whodunit kind of a thing. And it's not really that. Now, I, I guess that would me be... Uh my expectations were different than what I was going to get. That doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the game for what it is. The game is fun. I definitely enjoyed the game as, as it is played. I like the artwork. I like the fact that you are attacking other players and trying to gather the resources you need in order to win the game. There's also a lot of different combinations of cards that work together that are really, really cool. Uh, and the equipments, too, have given you certain bonuses and benefits. It feels... It's it's interesting because it feels like a lot of different little games put together that make up this really interesting tackle, tactical card game. Overall, it's going to be one of those games where I think you're going to need to decide for yourself if it's right for you. I like this game. I enjoy it. I think there's definitely a place for it, especially with more players. Three and four players is definitely where I suggest playing this game. Definitely enjoy it. I definitely think you should take a look at it. Deadlands, the big easy and noir style... Uh, game involving moving around and uh, dealing with your opponents in any way 
necessary. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead, Andrew. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at all the rest of the stuff we do on the site. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to take a look at Deadlands, the big, easy, the more style of tableau management, area control, tactical card games. A lot of stuff going on with this one. Uh, and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. Sorry if I feel I look a little blah blah blah. It's because I'm just getting over being sick, as you can probably tell through my voice. So hopefully most of the things I made made sense in this review, I, I hope. And if not, eh, I'll try next time. <laughs>